So today we're going to be building out our Tesla coil. I have some 28 gauge wire. I also have some 2 inch white PVC pipe. I have two caps. And right over here I have a stack of boards, some tape. We're going to be ready to go. We got our drill. Here's what we're looking at guys. I need to build a form that basically goes from all the way over here to this side here and to that side. We're going to drill and tap the tops right here, place them on both sides, and then we're going to create the jig around it. We're also going to create a jig right here around this. One side here, one side here. This is going to sit up. We'll put the post through it, and then this thing will be ready to go so we can wind from here to here. Now, I'll leave this up to you whether you want to hand wind it or you want to use your uh, drill. One thing you are going to have to have, just so you know, just have some blue tape handy and some electrical tape handy. You can still use the green stuff, I'd stay away from the tan stuff. So, let me go ahead and measure this out, and we're going to go ahead and build this jig. Okay, let's take a look at this here. 23 and a half inches is what we have. I went ahead and marked this too. Now, I need about one eighth of an inch at the top. That's where we're going to stop the wire. We have at the bottom right here, four inches up. You see I put a hole in it, and I put another mark here, so at two inches. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a cap that comes over here, that it sits on at the base. So it sits here, the wire is going to come down, and it's going to go through that hole right there. Now, it's pretty simple. Our secondary, or excuse me, our primary will wrap around this. I'll show you we'll do that later. But this right here, we take our dimension now. We're going to leave caps on. We're good to go. We're going to put a hole in here and we're going to drill it. I basically want a little bit of room here. So from this point to this point. I did not try to line it up perfectly. As you can see, we're off by whatever this distance is right here. Gives me a little bit of wiggle room back and forth. You don't want much. Our jig is going to be collapsible. So you're going to be able to take it and remove one side of it. So don't get concerned about all the distances as long as we get in there and it's not binding. Okay, this one here, we want it about what, that much off? We'll mark it. Same way here, Oops. mark it, make sure this is lined up, yep. That right there, that distance is what we want. A little bit of room on each side, won't bind, but tight enough where it's not going to wiggle everywhere. Alright, now, we need to take those measurements and bring them right over here to the top saw and get cutting. So, give me a second, let me pull all these numbers. I'll cut all this up real quick and I'll show you how it's done. Alright, so let's measure this out. We're going to go ahead and write on our table because we could just take some rubbing alcohol and clean it off. We are at 25 and one half on that one. And we are at four and three eighths on that one. So now we have our markings. We're going to build the inside gap. So the bottom piece is going to go right in between here, making it easy. That means that all we got to do is build the height after that. And then we could just screw it on and maybe put something on the corners here in order to brace it so we make sure it doesn't screw up on us. And we'll do the same to this one. So we have our two bottom pieces cut, and I just wanted to point this out. This one here is a little bit long, right here, about nine and a quarter or so. The reason is, because this length is so long, this right here is going to have to move. Now, I could put a ball bearing drawer guide under it and slide it back and forth as we go, but I didn't want to overcomplicate it. I just wanted to keep it simple. 
that is an option yes it would work and yes it'd be good get a 24 inch drawer guide you're good to go slide it back and forth you're good to follow now i'm going to keep it simple in this version we're basically going to be sticking our coil on here putting it right here and we're going to drill it right here going to hold it down we're going to do a little bit of this coil now when we do this bring the camera over here we'll look at it like this so now our coil is going to be set up and we're going to do it and we're going to wind we're going to stop probably about right here we're going to put a piece of blue tape on it so it does not unwind if it unwinds you are screwed so don't let it do that then we're going to unhook this and move it over then we're going to wind the rest now what does that mean for the last couple winds? Now, again, you're going to need your blue tape here. Put the blue tape here. We will pull the cap. Take this out of its jig, and we'll finish it out. Now, you could leave it where this is open at the top, but I've never seen a Tesla coil do that. Every one of them has to deal with this. So, you can always, if you have a 3D printer, make something that insets here goes flat here and you can run it all the way to the edge if you want me personally guys this has always been fairly easy let's just do it this way again just so we're aware of this hole here and this line is where we start and the reason for that is is we want to feed this back in here inside and down now you don't have to you can leave it on the outside you don't have to drill anything it's personal preference at this point you just need to get it out of the way so that when you put your bottom on, it's not in the way of sliding on. So that's it. Let's go ahead and build the rest of the jig. I'll put in the rest of the parts and we'll see how it looks. So now we have everything cut. Here's what we got, guys. And I wanted to add some extra protection on, on this one here because I don't want it falling over. So basically, we have this. We have it capping. And I'm going to screw this right into the back side here. And we're going to have a nice jig. I can drill this down right to the table. Again, if you have a shop table, pretty easy, right? Take your pipe. Your pipe obviously is going to fit right in between there. Now, we'll leave this one side hanging. We won't glue that side. We'll put it in there, lock this in our jig, and it's good to go. Now, we're going to check tolerances. When it's sitting right here, we're still good to go here. It still goes right up under there. So that is good. That's pretty simple. Guys, when you do this, and you got this kind of pipe, I'll just show you. Right here, we're about, what, 5 and 1, 2, 3 sixteenths. So, and then we have our length, which is 27 and 1 sixteenths, which is what all this comes out to be when you get these lock with these and they just go on the end it's not hard we're not trying to rebuild the world here we're just trying to make a jig so this one's good I'm happy with that one last thing you have another scrap piece of wood put it under it and I'll show you why when you build this at some point you're going to want to paint this or not paint it but lacquer it when this thing is built and this thing is in its jig. You can simply remove this. We don't glue it. We'll glue this corner or whatever. You can leave it right here, or you can leave that piece on and just turn it as you go ahead and spray it. We'll get into that a little later, but again, we got to think ahead as we're doing these things. So, this board here, what's the use of it? Because it'll suck to the ground and we could take it outside and spray this thing and it won't tip over This little board tips over all day. You're gonna hate life. Put it on top of this board. We're good to go so That's this jig here. We're set. All we got to do is we're gonna put the holes on each side of it That we're gonna hold it in by we're gonna put them together and I'll show you that we'll put one hole all the way through so that they're equal on both sides, that's going to be good. This one here, again, we'll find our point we want it to hang at. We're going to lock it in. The two little lockers right here. Now, 
What's the goal? When you set this in here, you're steady. You're not going where it wobbles everywhere. That's all you want to do is you, you just want to make sure this thing doesn't wobble. So, again, this will move back and forth. That's going to hit and we'll, we'll glue the daylights out of that one and drill it together. In order to do this right here, all we need to do is line this up. We want this part to come to the edge. Simply just make a mark. We know that this is two inches, so at the one inch mark, we can simply draw the line. Line that up. Oops. You can use your framing square here, it's not really a problem. We're going to look at it here, how big is that? Uh, let's say two and three quarters, so we're just going to divide that in half. So you would have one and three eighths. That's your center point there, a little bit over. I drew that line a little off. That's where we're going to put our drill hole. Now we just got to figure out exactly what it is we're going to put in there for a screw in these. So let me find some screws around here and get it going. All right, when we go to put these on, there's two ways to do this, guys, depending on how you measure it in the beginning. I personally put mine on. I got a little bit of wiggle. I can probably tighten that up just a little bit. You may want just a hair of drag on this. It's up to you. So, all we have to do here is take this, put any screw you want to in here. I don't care. As long as you drilled it out right in the center, put it in. Put it through, get it in there, take your nut here, I use lock nuts, I don't like the thing coming off. So why are we doing this guys? If you've ever had one of these fall off and unwind on you, now you know why we do this. So right here I could set the drag on it by how much it's tightened, because it's a lock nut, it's going to stay there. So I just want a hair. I don't, I don't want too much in there. And just get a hair. I probably go a little tighter. There we go. Just enough so it drags a little bit. All right. Ready for the next step. Now, if you're going to glue something, wet cloth, wet paper towel, good to go. This stuff gets everywhere, guys. You want to be able to wipe it quickly on the outside of stuff. Make sure your glue's got good to go. It's unstuck. Mine always gets stuck. All right, you're going to need your drill. So drill and a bunch of screws. Do I care what kind of screws you use? Not necessarily. Pick up a bucket of screws, you're good to go. Inch and a quarter uh, to inch and a half. The reason I say that, you're going through a piece of three quarter. You want it to at least go a half inch in, so you got to have inch and a quarter there inch and a half just means it goes in deeper and holds tighter so that's good to go all right this is my right side my right side gets the glue take two screws here i'm just going to preset two good to go Right there. Now, if you're looking at it again, screws, I've been doing this for so long. You're looking for the center point of the wood, just like that. That's it. You can do this any way you guys want, man. I, I prefer doing it this way. Now 
Normally I would just take my nail gun and nail this thing real quick in all corners and then pop it with screws. We're not building cabinets here, we're just building an in-shot jig. Okay, and this side, we're going to leave it removable, but we need to first put the drill holes in it. See why I did this first. It's easier to hit these than it is to put these in. This wood kind of sucks for everything, guys. So it's one of those things that falls apart on you. So if you have a chance to do it in pine or something, do it. Not again, shop jig. You got an extra mallet you run around. You got something else. Go ahead and do it. I'm not using my left arm and doubting it really hinders the progress of all this. Now we have our presets, we're good to go here. Jig one is almost done. We want to use this. Gonna go ahead and mark it a little bit. Oh, we got what seven and three quarters, so we can safely say that if we drop this thing about what two and a half inches off, right there. About two and a half is right there, and then each side is what inch and a quarter. And right there, inch and a quarter. So we'll mark it. This is where our jig's going. So if I drilled, drilled straight down, guys, it would go into there. So we got to pick a different screw and go probably from the bottom. Let's see, do I have any short ones? Oh, I might. Oh, hold on. I might get lucky today. Never know what's working around in there. That, that's barely going to go. Okay, spin, take a look at the whole thing, we're good to go, we'll pull off one side, we'll put our pipe in there, and we're ready to spin, at least on that one we got to build one more jig though, so let's pop this and we'll put in our pipe.
There we go, we got a little extra room in there. Look at that. Lose free. It's easy. Let's take a look down a little bit real quick. Got plenty of room right here. No trouble with the wire coming in. Got a steady base. Look. That works good for painting too. We don't have to do anything. Look. When we go to lacquer it, spray it. It's in a jig that stands on its own. We can set it outside. Guys, we are rolling good now. This jig here. Let's go ahead and set. Hopefully the angles are okay. I'll do what I can, man. I guess it's kind of a small space in here right now. All right. Let's take a look. We got this. Again, this one goes for this. This is a bit heavy. So this jig may be a little undersized right now. But hopefully it'll tighten up. So, we want it kind of about right there. Yeah, maybe a little bit lower, right there. I'm good with it being at the edge. So, take a measurement here. We got three inches to it. Take both of these. These are our side pieces. We go three inches. Again, we're in the center of this, so it's two inches. Build our little cross, and that's exactly where we're going to go. We'll slap them together and join both. Now we just need to find something. Now you can use a big pipe in here. Whatever makes you happy. Okay, so let's take a look. This is what we found. We got a piece of PVC here. Again, it doesn't have to be a bolt. It's a little bit loose in there, but it's fairly tight. We're good to go. I went ahead, and I took a... Uh, let's see if we get a picture of 5 eighths right here is what it is and we just put that in there now these are a bit tight which is perfect they'll fit in there but they're a bit tight now why do I want that well once it goes in there I want this to stick I want this to be able to move just a little bit so hold it tight let it move just a little bit in this project, a little bit of tension in different places is good. You don't want things loosey-goosey where everything can unwind on you. Again, you can pull it a little bit, you know what I mean? We're not using super thin wire, so it doesn't have to be super loose. So, But you need a little bit of give. And that's what we have here. So you can see a little bit of give, move. We're good to go. All right. Let's go ahead and mark this thing up and build it. Water out of the way. Okay, let's take a look here. Here's our two sides. We want that well, a little bit more forward than we do back. Let's take a measurement here about what two inches. Let's go two and a quarter. I like that better.
Okay, on this one we're gluing the daylights out of it. Make sure, wet rag, glue. We have a mark where we want to be. Now you can leave this dirty like this, or come back and do this, and wipe your fingers. What I generally like to do, mark it on this side, mark it on this side. We know which side is our top, write T on it if you don't. Helps to have big hands doing this. I think I grab everything. Get that in there. Now, when I do this, my thumb sits on here so it stays flat. I'm holding the top here. I generally put a finger over here. That's what I like to do. Nobody has to do it my way. Some people lose their grip on the screw or their drill and put it right in their finger. That's you, don't do it this way. Move your finger. Okay, same thing here. Here it dirty. Clean it up. Right finger. Good to go. Line it up. Getting old, man. getting old. All right, now, so next piece here, and our back side goes like that. So let's get four screws and we're gonna pre drill them. I don't like that. That's just going to be a broken part. Move it down, move it over. Too far to the outside, MDF, blow up. That's exactly what it's going to equal. Three more screws, we'll do it again. I hold mine like this, guys. You're welcome to use the sleeve. I'm not accustomed to doing it. Again, I've been doing this since the 80s, so. That's the way I do it, and yes, that has meant as screws get cheaper, I do get more metal springs. And yes, they still suck as much as always. Get no. Now what we're gonna do here is screw them in. Pretty simple. See if I can't go left hand if my arm's up for it. I put my finger around the back, hold them together, we're creating a pinch. Go in a little slowly. Take my knuckle here, push it out a little bit. Yeah, it's a jig now. <laughs> Sorry. Used to building cabinets where everything's tolerance. Thing to this side. Okay, I'm gonna just run these in real quick.
Okay, good to go. When you're finished, you guys should have something that looks like this locked in there. Again, MDF sucks. You see it doing that? So, this side on. Hold it together. This side over here. We're locked and loaded, pretty good. It's only holding what, five pounds is what they say this is, so. All right, once we get it in there, guys, that's what we end up with, right there. Stay straight. Good to go. Simple little jig. It's not knocking over. It's not doing anything else. We'll put the PVC pipe in there just a little bit more. And again, since it's tight on these, it's loose on this. Kind of like the perfect setup for this. And again, we'll drill this down. So let me reset this real quick, move this junk out the way. How much dry time do you need for the glue? Well, before I can even start this thing, it'll probably be set up enough to work on it. So let's take a look now. We have our front one set up for our pipe. That spins. You can always tighten that a little bit more so it spins a little bit less. Your call. This one's set up back here. Good to go. Now again, if you have a 22 inch ball bearing drawer guide, you can hook it to the table or a board underneath. Put it on here and it will... And I'll step back for this. As, I'm trying to get the camera right. As you go, it could follow all the way down with that drawer guide. That's your call. I'm gonna do it this way. Got a simple jig set up. Again, once this is all on there, guys, remember, you tape your first starting. When you put the first couple runs on there, you know, a little bit past where your, uh, your uh, electrical tape goes, right here. Again, we're gonna tape it off here. Once, once you go ahead and do this, You're going to be able to tape it and then spray it. So, what you could do when you build this is say, okay, what if I want to leave a little bit more play one way or the other uh, on this side so that I can get to this without having it half off? Absolutely. Just make sure it sits, you know, a little bit inside so it doesn't come off. That's acceptable. You could do that. This is one of the most important parts when you start this. What you want to do is leave some excess, wrap it around a couple times, put it on with the blue tape, let it stay there, then start winding. Now, as you wind it, keep pushing everything in tight until you can get around to where it's about double the width of your electrical tape. Right then, you stop, you tape it, and then you go ahead and tape the first run of electrical tape on that bottom part. That way it stays there no matter what, and your coil is set. After that, you're off to the races. It's time to see a, a big fat guy move at what? Six times the speed? Let's go. Just to let you guys know, one hour, 13 minutes is exactly what it took for me to wind this coil by hand. If you have a friend over there, which I didn't today, unfortunately, who can just basically hook a drill to one side as long as you keep that thing straight, you can keep it going. One thing is, with your left hand, you're just going to have to keep that wire tight. Where do you want to aim it? Basically, 
just a little bit to the right. So a little bit to the right where it's winding, not too much. You're basically looking just for the wire to sit perfectly against the next wire. As you get started, you'll get to understand this stuff. It's fairly easy. Anytime you want to stop, you have to go over and put your hand right next to where the wire is last been done and hold it. Take some tape and tape it over. Make sure the tape is down good. Use the blue tape. Do not, under any circumstance, use the electrical tape here. If it sticks too much, you're in trouble. Just do yourself a favor. Use the blue tape. Stop. Get your hands better. I got arthritis, guys, in both hands, and they hurt. And if you saw it at normal speed, you see them shaking constantly during this. So, take your time. Get it right. This is the most important part. Whatever you do, do not let it unwind. Use your arm. Put it on the pipe. Whatever you have to do to slow this thing down to where you need to, do it. Trust me. Something this long is going to be really, really hard to really figure out and put back together. You'll probably have to cut the wire completely off and start over. Take your time. Get it right. Make sure the windings are right. Make sure they're tight. Best you can. Anytime you see something out of line, fix it right away. Do not wait. Do not lose tension whatsoever between the wire and the spinning uh, part that you're putting it on, where the uh, PVC pipe is. Do not lose tension. You will automatically fail, and it will unravel on you. This is important. Take your time. Take it slow. Keep the blue tape handy. Make sure you have extra pieces laying around. Tape it as you go. All right. I don't want to talk the whole time while this is on, so I'm going to set it to one of the fastest settings I can, and you can watch this thing get wound real quick, and I'll slow it back down towards the end. All right, warp speed it is.
We finally made it to the end. Trust me, with all the arthritis in my hands, it hurt real bad. Anyway, all you have to do here, guys, simply tape it with the electrical tape. Again, make sure you have some ready. Just try to get everything tight as you can toward the top. You're probably going to end up leaving maybe an eighth of an inch at the top that is not put wire on. Or, what is it, like two millimeters, something like that. Something just real small. That's it. You're going to put the electrical tape on there. That part right there is going to be taped and solid with the electrical tape. Take your time. Cut it beforehand. Do a good job. This is not the time to pull it off and yank it and have the stuff scrunch up on you. Nope. This is supposed to be nice looking. Make sure you have some cut in advance. That's it. Tape it up. Get it ready to go. And we'll get on to the next process. So there it is, guys. All that hard work, number two coil, ready for lacquer. So, what I didn't anticipate, and I guess everybody should, so when you do yours, at the very top here, I wound it all the way to the top. So, get a piece of PVC to go on the inside, the cap, or a piece that goes on the inside, so that you can put it in there. On second thought, just put it up to it, tape it, we're good to go. This right here is the lacquer I use or polyurethane, whatever you want to call it. Just take a picture of this, bring it down to your local hardware store and buy it. I've used it on several Tesla coils, have so absolutely no issues whatsoever with it. Alright, here we go. We're going to go ahead and lacquer this thing. We got it outside. We taped the side over here. That's how we got past this today. Sorry, I'm going to hold the camera and try to do this. My hands are still a little bit shaky from winding this coil. So what does this do guys? It does two things. One, protects the thing. Number two, it's gonna make this stick a little bit. It's gonna make that wire stick to the whole pole here. You want that. This doesn't have to be done all at once. And there we go. That's all I'm putting on it for now guys. I'm gonna do the same thing three times. For the next couple days, yes, it's going to make your garage stink. Just going to have to live with it. Can't leave it outside. Anyway, that's it. That's how this is done. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things and have yourself a great day. Thank you.